The second season of American Gods recently ended, and while it did answer some of the questions we had after season one, it also posed more questions than it answered. We might have to wait a full year or more before we get an answer to some of these new questions in season three, but that won't stop me from theorizing and speculating. As I said in my breakdown of the season two finale, Shadow's altered driver's license is a pretty blatant hint that he will head to Lakeside, Wisconsin in season three, and likely spend most of the season there. But I'm not going to focus on Lakeside in this video. In this video, I'm going to theorize about one story element and how it relates to Shadow's identity, that being the mysterious light that radiates from him. What exactly is it, and what role will it play in the remaining American Gods series? In order to examine this, I will have to delve into Shadow's backstory. Not only his backstory in the series, but also in the novel American Gods, and the Neil Gaiman novella The Monarch of the Glen, which follows the character of Shadow Moon two years after the events of American Gods. I won't spoil the ending of the American Gods novel, and what role Shadow plays in the war, or the ending of The Monarch of the Glen but I will allude to details regarding Shadow's identity that appear in both stories. You've been warned. I should also state that while these two stories give us clues about Shadow's identity, they rarely confirm anything, aside from a few important details, like the fact that Shadow is Mr. Wednesday's son. Thankfully, the series finally revealed that, and I can address it. Shadow's light is mainly a concept of the series, although it is mentioned briefly in the novel. When Shadow meets the newly dead Laura, he asks her how she found him, and she replies, you shine like a beacon in a dark world. That simple line became something more elaborate in the series. First in season one as the beacon of light that Laura uses to find Shadow, and then in the second season during a flashback when Shadow's mother makes reference to his light, saying, No matter how dark the world gets, your light will always be shining. This implies that Shadow's light has meaning outside of his connection to Laura. But what exactly is that meaning? Well, one theory that I've noticed pops up a lot in the comments of my videos is that Shadow either is or has some connection to the Norse god of light, Baldur. Baldur is another of Odin's sons in Norse mythology. He is the god of joy, beauty, and light. And it is said that he is so beautiful that light radiates from him. Like Baldur, Shadow radiates light, and I have to admit that Shadow, or rather the actor who plays him, Ricky Whittle, is one sculpturesque, handsome man. Another connection between Shadow and Baldur is their name. In the novella The Monarch of the Glen, Gaiman tells us that the name on Shadow's birth certificate is Baldur Moon, and incidentally also reveals he was born in Oslo, Norway, likely a place of power for the Norse gods. Why exactly Shadow was named Baldur and who named him Baldur are never revealed, but this could be interpreted in several ways. One way is that Shadow simply is Baldur, the Norse god of light. Another would be that Wednesday or Shadow's mother named him Baldur as a clue that he carries something of Baldur's with him. Perhaps Shadow carries Baldur's reincarnated spirit or soul, or his light. Yet another interpretation would be that Shadow is simply named after a member of his family, in the same way that many people are named after their great uncle or what have you. I find the first interpretation difficult to buy. If Shadow is Baldur, it raises the question, why is he so different from the other gods in the novel and series? Unlike most of the gods we meet, he's not aware of his own godly identity, nor does he seem to exist and thrive through worship in the same way that the other gods do. Shadow also has little in common with Baldur, aside from their common father and the light that emanates from them. The two may in fact have more differences than similarities. For example, let's start with the visually obvious. Baldur is often described as fair-skinned, and I mean fair-skinned to the point of shining. Shadow, on the other hand, well, you could say he's light-skinned, but he's by no means pale. Another glaring difference is that Baldur is often described as a bringer of joy. Joy simply oozes out of this pasty-faced pretty boy, and everyone loves him for it. In contrast, Shadow cannot even be described as upbeat. Baldur is also described as extremely wise. While Shadow, he has his moments of cleverness, but most of the time he has almost no idea what the hell is going on. Then there is the matter of Baldur's parentage. Baldur is generally said to be the son of Odin and Frigg. Shadow and Baldur share the same father, but I don't think Shadow's mother is Frigg. She may in fact be another goddess, that's something I could theorize about in a future video, but there doesn't seem to be any indication that she is Odin's wife, Frigg. So if Shadow isn't literally Baldur, is he some kind of reincarnation of the Norse god? This to me is more plausible. In Norse mythology, Baldur is unintentionally killed by his blind brother, Hodr, due to some god-level trickery on the part of Loki, and this begins a chain of events that leads to the Norse apocalypse, Ragnarok. 
In the poem Voluspa, we learn that after Ragnarok is completed, Baldur will be reborn in the new world that rises from the ashes of the old. Perhaps Shadow is this rebirth. During Baldur's funeral, Odin whispered mysterious words to him, so perhaps he told his son that he would be reborn ages later in the form of Shadow. Shadow doesn't really resemble Baldur in personality or appearance, but he might host Baldur's spirit or soul, and perhaps this is the light that radiates from him. Or perhaps Shadow inherited Baldur's light and nothing else. In the novella The Monarch of the Glen, Shadow visits a remote village in northern Scotland, an area once ruled by the Norse during the Viking Age. There he has several dreams in which he is visited by the now dead Norse gods of the land. The Norse gods survived in other lands, like America, but it seems the Norse gods of this land died sometime after the area became Scottish. In Shadow's dream, the Norse gods arrive on Negelfar, the ship of the dead made entirely from the finger and toenails of corpses, and they address Shadow as Baldur, the Sunbringer. Shadow disagrees with them, explaining that he is not Baldur, but he recalls that Baldur is the name on his birth certificate. To Shadow, Baldur is just a name, but the dead Norse gods of Scotland seem to believe otherwise. Perhaps they are right, or perhaps Shadow is right and it's just a name, nothing more. When you're talking about Gaiman's work, it's difficult to know for sure because he has a habit of intentionally obscuring details, dropping esoteric hints that may or may not lead anywhere. In other words, he seems to enjoy confusing his readers. And for that reason, I can't be sure if Shadow has a real connection to Baldur. It's possible the third interpretation is correct, and Shadow simply shares Baldur's name and father. Shadow's light in the series may represent something entirely different. But what do you think? What does Shadow's light represent? Has he somehow inherited the light from the Norse god Baldur, or is it something else? Do you think Shadow's mother is a goddess, or is she human? I would love to read your opinion in the comments below, and I hope we get answers to these questions in the third season of American Gods, whenever that will premiere. I will probably do more American Gods fan theory or prediction videos before season 3 premieres, but this is all I wanted to cover in this video. Please join me for more videos about American Gods, and my breakdown of the new Gaiman TV adaptation, Good Omens, sometime after it premieres at the end of May. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Check out these other videos about American Gods, and if you want to help support the channel, donate to the channel Patreon listed in the description below. Until next time.